Hello everyone and welcome back again for the exclusive webinar from HDFC Securities. Today I would like to uh, welcome you all on the exclusive webinar that we have. So the topic that we'll be covering today is how can you plan your retirement by investing into NPS? Yes, you can actually plan your retirement by just investing into NPS as well. A lot of speculation and a lot of people have this tendency or a perspective that NPS is a tool which would help you to only save your taxes till the time as a individual subscriber you're investing into NPS. But to answer the question, yes, NPS gives you an opportunity to save your taxes Plus, it also builds a corpus to save for your retirement as well. So that once you retire, once you are done with your working life, you can live your retirement with peace and without degrading your standard of living. So the mechanism or the product of NPS is built in such a way that it helps each and every one to not only save taxes till the time we are investing into it, it also helps you to build a corpus for your retirement as well. Now, how does that happen? How do you build a corpus? What are the impl impl implementations and how does the working happen? In the next 30 minutes, we'll actually help, I'll actually help you to understand the aspects of NPS, the features, the benefits that NPS gives you, not only in terms of the tax benefits, but also as an investment product, what are the returns that NPS offers, the withdrawal facilities that NPS has, the liquidity and the recent changes that NPS has done or the recent changes that the government has done under the NPS scheme and how beneficial is it now for the individual subscribers to enroll into NPS. Okay, again, thank you everyone. And now just let's start. Okay, so the first slide basically talks about the introduction or journey of NPS, how NPS was introduced into our country and what, how, uh, what's the journey of NPS been? So if I talk about NPS again, and National Pension System or National Pension Scheme as it is called, is a voluntary defined retirement savings option. So this is a voluntary retirement savings option designed for the subscribers or the individuals enrolling into NPS to get into the habit of saving for the retirement income, eventually additionally saving taxes as well. So NPS was introduced by government of India on 1st of January 2004. It was launched in the year 2004. Again, 2004 being the year when government declared that it would not pay pensions or it would not give pensions to the employees joining the government sector from the year 2004. So that's the agenda or that's the main motive why NPS was introduced. So as as it is a government of India product, it was in, it was only available for state and central government employees. So the employees working in state and central government were only allowed to do NPS. Later in the year 2009, five years after it was introduced to our country, the powers or the function, the powers or the functionalities to run NPS was given to PFRDA. An act was passed by the parliament and the functions or the administrative part or the rules and regulations or to supervise, to promote and to increase the awareness and the participation into this pension program. Government appointed PFRDA as it's as the regulatory body for NPS. So it is in line like we have RBI, which supervises all the, uh, the which supervises the banking system in the country. Similarly, we've got PFRDA, which supervises the national pension program in our country. So what uh, PFRDA did is to increase the awareness and the participation and to bring in more subscribers into the pension plan. They brought in all citizen model. So what happened in an all citizen model was each and every Indian citizen aging between 18 to 60 was eligible to open an NPS account. Irrespective if that subscriber or if that individual is a government sector employee, private sector employee, MNC, MNC employee, 
anyone who is an Indian citizen and who is aging between 18 to 65 was elig 18 to 60 sorry was eligible to open an NPS account later to increase the awareness about NPS to extend its facility the age bracket was increased to 65 so as of now any Indian citizen aging between 18 to 65 is eligible to open an NPS account under the all citizen model this was introduced this model was introduced by PFRDA on 1st of May 2009 later in on 1st on December 2011 or in early 2012 PFRDA launched a corporate model so this corporate model was launched or the motive or the aim of launching this corporate model was to increase the awareness or participation under the national pension system from the salaried section of the society. PFRD realized that the major population or the target population that we or the major population that we consist of today is from the salaried section. So to attract that section and to bring in that section into the NPS model, this corporate model was introduced. So as of now, we've got two models of NPS, an individual model and a corporate model. Now, what's the difference between both these models and how does this work? I'll just cover it in the coming slide. Okay, so these are the basic benefits that NPS gives you. One of the uniqueness or beautification that NPS gives you is the tax benefits. So as an individual, if you invest into NPS or if you contribute towards NPS, the tax benefits that a subscriber enjoys is over and above the ATC limit. Second is low cost. As an investor or as a subscriber towards NPS, NPS is one of the most cheapest investment pension schemes available in the market. So if I talk about the administrative cost or the fund management cost in NPS, it is as low as 0.01%. It's the cheapest investment product right now available in the market. And the reason behind this is the product is a government of India product and the government has a backing of this product. Thirdly, it's again prudently controlled by PFRDA. So there is complete transparency in the investment norms, the rules and regulations, each and everything once your account is open is prudently controlled by PFRDA. Portability. So any subscriber who has opened his or her account today, for example, from Mumbai, later if the same subscriber wants to shift his or her base to any other location or to any other city, the NPS account is easily portable as it can be operated from the online portal of NPS. So there is no need to shift or transfer it to the exist current uh, city or current state that you will be uh, based out of. You can easily monitor it from the online platform that we have. Flexibility. There are various investment approaches and there are various PFMs available in NPS. So what are those PFMs? How does that work? I'll just cover it in the coming slides now. This slide basically talks about the tax benefits that NPS gives you. We have already covered this a lot of times. I just quickly touch base on this and so that we can move on to the next uh, slides that we have now. Having a corporate life, as I mentioned in the previous slides, we've got two variants of NPS. First is an individual NPS. Second is a corporate NPS. Now, what's the difference between an individual NPS and a corporate NPS? There's only one difference between both of them. The difference is, for example, if you have a corporate NPS, which basically means the corporate that you're working with or the employer that you are working with has a tie up with any of the POPs. POPs are called as point of presence. So as this being a government of India product under the corporate NPS model, license were given to some of the broking firms, banks, NBFCs to be a POP and open and uh, to be a POP and tie up with a corporate and open their employees NPS accounts. So that's the that's the term that we are called as we are called as POPs. We would be the one who will be managing and looking care of the accounts, the, the NPS accounts that you open. So, for example, if you have a corporate NPS account with any of the POPs, you get an opportunity to invest up to 10% of whatever is the basic salary. 
it is considered as an employer's contribution so the reason this is called as an employer's contribution is the employer would be deducting the amount from your salary and credit and would be crediting it back into the NPS account. So under the employer's contribution under the corporate NPS model, you get an opportunity to invest up to 10% of whatever is your basic salary and the same amount that you invest towards your NPS account from your salary part would be exempted under section 80 CCD2 over and above the ATC limit. Yes, the amount that you invest is exempted over and above the ATC limit, which basically means, for example, if your basic salary is supposedly 5 lakhs and if you invest the entire 10%, so 50,000 is the amount that you will be investing in a financial year from your salary part and that same amount would be exempted from your taxable salary over and above the ATC limit. And there is no upper capping on the amount. Whatever is your basic salary, the maximum you can invest is 10% and the same amount would be exempted. That's the employer's contribution that we term as it would be deducted from your salary and your employer would credit it back into the NPS account. Now, once that contribution is done, once the contribution happens from your salary part, if the same employee feels that he or she wants to avail more tax benefit, that employee from their individual category can invest into NPS and gain up to a tax benefit of up to 50,000 rupees under section ATCCD 1B over and above the ATC oh. limit. Okay. Okay. So this is the only difference between an individual NPS and a corporate NPS. So if you have a corporate NPS account, a subscriber towards NPS can invest both from his employer's part plus from the individual individual contributions that the employer would do or the subscribers would do and both these contributions are the both these contributions can happen under the same pran account and both these contributions would fetch you an tax exemption of over and above the atc limit now this again as i again as i said it's the only difference between an individual nps and a corporate nps under the corporate scheme under the sorry under the individual scheme the tax benefit that a subscriber enjoys would be capped to 50000 only so for example if you have an individual nps account today no matter what the amount you invest the tax benefits would be capped to a maximum of 50000 in a financial year so that's the only difference between an individual account and a corporate NPS account. Moving on to the third slide, the investments or the contributions that a subscriber makes towards his or her NPS account, there are four asset classes which are prescribed by the government of India or which are prescribed by PFRDA. So as a PFM into NPS, as a V, the PFM has to invest under the four asset classes that we have so the four asset classes that we have under the nps scheme is equities corporate bonds government bonds and alternative infrastructure so these are the asset classes that we have under the nps scheme these are the investment choices that we have so under the four asset classes that we have in NPS, these are the four investment choices. We've got an active choice of investment approach and an auto choice. Now, what is the difference between an active choice and an auto choice? So the main difference between an active choice and an auto choice is, for example, as a subscriber, if I select active choice as my investment approach, I have the right, I have the fundamental right of choosing in which asset class how much proportion of my investments should go for example if i have 100 rupees as my nps investment i'll decide out of that 100 how much should be going in asset class e which is equity asset class c which is corporate bonds and asset class g which is government securities but when it comes to equity there is a cap of 
75%, which means you can only invest 75% of the total investments that you have under the NPA scheme, under the active choice. So that is active. Now, the second investment approach is auto. So what does auto mean? Auto is basically an automated life cycle fund, wherein the investments automatically get allocated according to the age of the subscriber. Now, how does that happen? So if you can see, there are three columns at the bottom of the screen, which states aggressive LC 75, moderate 50, conservative 25. What does this mean? So these are the life cycle funds which are associated with auto choice. So what happens here is, for example, if I select aggressive LC 75 as my investment approach, uh, as my life cycle fund under the auto choice of investment approach till 35 years of my age 75 percent of my investments would be in equity rest would be in corporate bonds and government securities as my age increases beyond 35 my automatically my equity exposure would decrease and my debt exposure would increase that's aggressive 75 under the moderate scheme similarly Till 35 years of my age, 50% would be in equities. In conservative, 25% would be in equities. That's auto. So under the auto scheme, as a subscriber, you don't have the right of choosing in choosing the percentage of investments in the asset classes. It is very, very automatic. The good part here is as a subscriber, you have the right of choosing or you have the flexibility to flexibility to choose in which asset class or in, in which in, uh, asset class or in what would be the investment approach that you would want to go for. Plus every financial year twice, you have the option of changing it either from active to auto or from auto to active. And that can be done directly from the portal that you'll be getting once your accounts are opened. So that was the investment approach and the asset classes that we spoke about. So this basically is the pension fund managers and the annuity service providers will take care of the contributions that the subscribers would who would be invest uh, the contribution that the subscribers would make towards his or her NPS account. So on the right hand side, there are seven pension fund managers which are again appointed and prudently supervised and regulated by PFRD. So the seven pension fund managers are HDFC pension, ICICI Prudential pension, Kotak Mahindra, SBI pension, UTI, LIC and Birla Sun Life. As a subscriber, again, you as a subscriber have the right of choosing whosoever fund manager you're comfortable with. Plus, every financial year once you have the option of changing your pension fund manager as well so these are the pension fund managers that we have in nps the left hand side talks about the annuity service providers so what is annuity annuity is basically pensions where does the annuity service provider come into the picture i'll just come back on that I'll just quickly cover the maturity and superannuation part. I'll then again link this thing to the annuity service provider. So under the NPS scheme, the maturity happens at the time of your retirement or at the superannuation age. So let's take an example. If the retirement age is at 60, as a subscriber into NPS, you get an opportunity to either get either exit from the account at the age of 60 or continue investing till the age of 70. So you have that choice of choosing. For example, if you choose that you are no longer interested, you want to close it at 60. What happens is at 60, whatever corpus that you have as NPS account holder, up to 60% of the entire corpus would be given to you at one go during your retirement you have the opportunity to withdraw up to 60 percent supposingly at retirement i have an nps corpus of 10 lakhs i have the opportunity to withdraw 60 percent as lump sum during my retirement and the 60 percent that the subscriber can withdraw during the retirement would be absolutely tax free no taxes would be charged on the 60 percent so this is a major, major and a positive change that has happened 
in NPS in the recent, recent budget. Previously, the entire 60% was not tax free. Only 40% of the 60% out of the 60% was tax free. The rest 20% would, would be taxed, would be taxed according, would be charged according to the tax lab that the subscriber falls in. But now going forward, the entire 60% is tax free. After this recent development or change that has happened, NPS has completely become an exempt, exempt, exempt investment option. So the contributions that you make towards your NPS account is tax exempt. The returns that you enjoy is tax exempt plus the corpus that you can withdraw or the lump sum that you can withdraw during your retirement would be absolutely tax exempt. So this is the 60% part which you can take it out during your retirement. For the rest 40%, if you have taken out the 60% needs to mandatorily go back into annuity, which is pension. Now for the 40% part, which goes back into the annuity, the annuity service providers coming to the picture. So as of now, we've got five annuity service provider. We've got HDFC Live, we've got LIC, ICICI, SBI and Star Union. As a subscriber, you have the choice of choosing who would be the annuity service provider which were you you would be choosing for your pensions for example if you select lic as your annuity service provider once you once you are done with your withdrawal procedure the legal representative from lic would come and would get in touch and explain the various annuity plans that would that the service provider would be having and whichever annuity service whichever pension plan sorry you find suitable for yourself you can select that pension plan and your pensions would start accordingly and this decision has to be taken during your retirement not now again yeah. it is not mandatory to take out the entire 60 percent during your retirement you have an option of taking out if you don't want to take out any lump sum during your retirement you have the option of putting the entire 100% back into annuity and enjoy the pensions coming out of the annuity that you have coming out the corpus that you have invested into NPS. So this is how the maturity and the pension happens. So this is what happens in case there is a withdrawal uh, in case of death. In case, God forbid, if the subscriber was invested into NPS dies in in any unfortunate incident and the, the subscriber dies before the retirement or the maturity period into NPS, whatever corpus that the subscriber would be having at the time, at the time of the death, the entire corpus goes back to the nominee at one go. That too, without any taxes being deducted. After maturity, one, which basically means once the employee subscriber has exited or closed the NPS account, whatever pension plan the subscriber has selected, the same would continue to the legal hire or to the nominee. So that is how the withdrawal procedure happens in case of a death. So this is basically the uh, functionalities or the features or the benefits that NPS has a whole gives you. So if I have to summarize the entire so if I have to summarize the entire NPS as an investment retirement investment plan in three lines, which basically would be NPS gives you an opportunity to save your taxes till the time you're investing into NPS because it gives you tax benefits over and above the ATC limit. Plus, it gives you attractive returns till the time you're investing into NPS. Plus, it builds a corpus for your retirement because at your retirement, a minimum of 40% needs to be invested back into annuity so that you fall under the pension plan. So I hope we have covered each and everything and I hope this webinar has been very, very knowledgeable to you. And again, I would like to thank 
each and every one of you who has joined the webinar thank you very much and have a good good day bye bye